Good morning, and you're very welcome to this morning's live all about kitchens. Now, my goodness, there's a lot of you doing kitchen renovations, refurbs, planning kitchen refurbishments at the moment. We have just been overwhelmed with questions. Um, it's amazing. And some absolutely brilliant questions as well. So it should be a really informative live this morning. And I'm delighted that Ed Ratkin has agreed to come back and chat to us again. Um, and just share his knowledge, his experience, and his absolute passion for designing kitchens and just the benefits that, uh, you know, enhancing that area of our homes can, can have. Because, my goodness, over the last while, if there's one area of the home that's had an absolute, um, you know, revival, I don't know, it's just gotten so much use over the last while. Um, it's been our schools, our boardrooms, uh, where we've been spending so much of our time, so, so worthwhile investing in this area of the home in particular. Um, if you get it right, it can just have so many amazing benefits. Um, and then loads and loads of you asking us about uh, integrating kitchens with open plan spaces, um, particularly family areas, that kind of thing. So just to remind you that we do have a free ebook on our website. I'll pop the link in the bio afterwards as well. But just if you go to the resources section in our website, you'll find the ebook. It's all about planning open plan spaces, things to think about, lessons I learned myself when doing it. Um, so lots and lots of information there too for anybody who, who's uh, planning that kind of area. So I'm just going to invite Ed to join me now. morning Ed. Hi how are you Denise? I'm great how are you doing? Good good thanks. Very you good. Can hear me and everything yeah? Oh yeah no wonderful loud and clear you're perfect. No I was just saying Ed we've it's just so many questions I hope I get I hope I've managed to uh, download them all now this morning but they were <laughs> coming thick and fast <laughs> but a lot of similar ones so hopefully we would with the extra 20 odd questions I okay. <laughs> better send these to Ed yeah no no it's great and you know what like just um just so many people planning a revamp of this space uh, but then we were chatting, Ed, so what have you seen over the last while, particularly the last 12 months? Um, what kind of projects are you seeing? Is there any difference than what you would have seen previously? Well, uh, it's pretty remarkable the amount of projects because the last yeah. 12 months, um, as you said in the intro, people are at home so much more and they're using their space a bit more. I think they're either just thinking about the space a bit more and just feeling that they can get more out of it or there's a lot not working for them at the moment. So yeah. we've had a, an enormous amount uh, uplift in inquiries over the last 12 months. And it's been, it's been across the board, I guess there's projects, new build projects, there is renovations, um, but there has been a huge amount of uh, refits as we call them. So people just going to do the kitchen um, so that's quite exciting, you know, there's some really Amazing. great projects coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think, you know, we were chatting yesterday, but what's really interesting, I think, is that the whole family have been at home. So the whole family have been using this space. And now it mm -hmm. is, you were just saying, it's the whole family that are getting involved in the in the refurb, which is quite a change. And mm -hmm. I'd say it, lot, it's a huge... There's a lot more bakers in Ireland than there was. Yes. Yeah. I um, say I love so, hearing yeah. stories about the kids uh, getting in there and just, you know, my kid loves yeah. baking. You know, every weekend there's scones and there's lemon drizzle cakes and everything, you know, it's brilliant. So that's fabulous. That's, yeah. you know, it's really nice, you know, it's a, it's a great thing for a family to bond with anyway. So why not, uh, why not make the space easy to work with and enjoy, you know? Definitely. No, 100%. Absolutely. And Ed, you know, I suppose quite similar what both of us do, you know, it's transforming people's homes, uh, mm -hmm. but ultimately transforming people's quality of life at home and their enjoyment of their home. Um, and, and for you, like, what is the favorite, what's your favorite part of, of what you do, I guess? Is it that, is it seeing that transformation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you say, our, our, our roles are very similar. People come to us with a brief, of, of issues that they have and mm. they're looking for you to make it right and they're handing over you know a serious amount of their personal savings and money to 
to get it right. So there's a big mm. trust factor. And so what I really love is, is that whole process of listening to people, taking on board what they want to do, you know, how they are going to get value and gain from what they're going to do. It's not only the money, it's the time and the energy that goes into yeah. it. Even a small mm-hmm. kitchen refit is still going to take a lot of energy to do it for people. Um, mm-hmm. So we certainly try to help that process for people. And for me, that makes it quite exciting because, you know, there's so many different ways you could go with it. Like one person wants something contemporary, another person wants something traditional. Somebody's restoring an old news cottage or somebody else is restoring, a, you know, a, a beautiful big old period. Hey, so it's great. You get to see a lot of different things. So it's quite exciting. Um, yeah. And uh, you get to meet a lot of different people, which is really great, you know. No, it is amazing. We were just chatting about that. Um, you know, the kinds of inquiries that we've been getting recently, they are all so completely different. Whereas maybe a few years ago, there'd have been a huge amount of similarity. You know, everybody mm-hmm. wanted a particular thing. It's just so different. And the projects, I think, have become so much more personal. You know, so I, again, we were chatting about this before people were thinking about the big job. But now they're making changes to their homes that will make an impact to them that they can enjoy. So like, mm-hmm. you know, the little ensuite bathroom, no one else is going to ever see that, but it has a huge benefit to, to refurbishing yeah. that. And the same with the kitchen, really. Um, so no, it's, it's it wonderful. Is, I think, you know, if, if you remember back to the boom, I think my memory of that was that people had nearly like a five-year plan with their house. So they were either yeah. going to, you know, do it up and flip it in five years and make a load of money and move to the next one. Or, you know, there was somewhat of a disposable attitude towards it. And then with the recession Mm -hmm. weekend, the people got really kind of conservative. It was like, okay, we're going to do a project, but it's going to be, we're going to keep it as, you know, tight as possible. We're going to go for a bit of formula there. You know, we're not going to stick, step the boat out. Now, I think there's a little sway back where the design, it, it's, it's much more design led. So like you say, much more personal. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we are literally, we could be working on 10 different styles of designs, you know, from, from one end of contemporary to the very end of traditional. And it's so personal. Um, mm-hmm. And the people aren't, it's not that people are thinking of changing quickly again or anything like that. They're still thinking of long term. So they're mm-hmm. still look, look for quality but they're doing it the way they want to do it. So they not want to, yeah. yeah. If I have to sell my house, I hope it appeals yeah. to everybody. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's great. Like It's really, uh, again, it makes things quite interesting then. Yeah, no, it does. And you're really working with them rather than them trying to second guess, well, is this adding value? Oh, of course you wanted to add value, but they were nearly, you're absolutely right, during the boom, people were thinking about future purchases and not themselves at all yeah. you know so they weren't making decisions that was going to really improve what they wanted because they were terrified you know that would put somebody else off so you know, it's yeah. been an amazing shift i think in that respect brilliant ed well look i have loads of questions for you but i think we better jump into some of the ones that people have been asking if that's okay yeah. um yeah. And, and i suppose the top one and and one that so many of us can relate to with kids at home lots of young kids so this person has three young children and how do they maintain uncluttered minimalism? Well, I suppose they could watch back on all of the lives for January because we did loads on decluttering. But I suppose if you are planning a kitchen and you don't want a lot of stuff on view, what's your advice to people who come to you with that? Denise, I think this is an amazing question. <laughs> it's, it's in and minimalist, well, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really <laughs> a very difficult one yeah um, I've thought long and hard about that question but I have to say it was the first one that came in and really for me I think it, to go minimalist you do need to have a bit more space okay or else you okay. just have to have very little stuff um, yeah. but if it yeah. is a family yeah. and family enjoy cooking and they enjoy all the things that you know the different uh, gadgets I suppose you can get with cooking you know the different styles of cooking mm-hmm. A bit of extra space really helps in the kitchen. You know, um, if you're lucky enough to have a larder press, that's step one. If you can have yeah. two larder presses, that's even better because then you can mm-hmm. have one for all your food storage and crockery storage, and then the other one can maybe be for baking. Or, you know, you find a lot of teenage boys are into juicing and 
you know, like different health regimes, like loads of different things, that little uh, factors that people have in their family. So trying to keep all of these little things in behind the cupboards, that's mm -hmm. the big thing. That's you know, the thing, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I really think doing the list, you know, kind of going right, well, this is the stuff we use regularly. We want to have it accessible, um, you know, but still been able to put it in behind the cupboard or have mm -hmm. it in a big drawer below the counter. That, I think, is the only way to approach the minimalist because yeah. really, you know, if unless you eat out five days of the week and mm -hmm. you, you know, your kids, I don't know, are better behaved than <laughs> Are most unusual, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that it's the old saying, you know, everything has a place and everything in its place. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's it. So you can think it, you can think it out, and you can actually find a home for everything. Yeah. You know? But so, it's about planning, isn't it? So like you say, have that list, mm -hmm. look at the things you have. And I think as well, like I know myself, a lot of those things, whether they're mixers or blenders or whatever, they're very heavy. So yeah. think about that, like not be having them super high up or, or again, maybe not too low down. So just so that it's easy for people to take it out, just think practically about the whole thing too. Well, that's it. And one other little thing on it is that the evolution of appliances, to be fair, in the last few years has, is clever. So mm -hmm. the likes of extra items, the likes of steamers and slow cookers and those kind of smaller yeah. items that people yeah. have always bought and they add clutter to countertops. Yeah. Most of your ovens now have those settings. So they have steam settings, they have slow cooking settings. So they yeah. are appliances. The smaller appliances, you can get rid of those. You know, the boiling water tap, the best thing ever, in my opinion. Isn't it just, and, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's no kettle on the counter. Those few mm -hmm. little things, they mm -hmm. make, they're, they're going to help you. So having a chat with your kitchen designer or going into a proper appliance uh, sales showrooms, they'll talk mm -hmm. you through some of those features. No, it's so true. And the appliances, like there are so many clever features now. Even like you say, the boiling water tap. Most of those come with integrated water filters as well. So you're doing away with two things. A lot of people had their filter on the counter too. So no, definitely. Yeah. And actually, we're going to be chatting to Cyril Mangan from Cal next week. I'll be talking to him about appliances. So we'll run through all mm -hmm. of that. But definitely, there's huge things, you know, you can do to minimize the amount of, of gadgets that you have. No, that's mm -hmm. brilliant, Ted. Great. And then um, something else. Uh, yes. So uh, again, so you like touched on that, just the butler pantry or the pantry and stuff like that. And I might show sh some images, but people asking for other ways to hide appliances. So what, what is, is a drawer better than a cupboard or, or what would you recommend for people? Well, accessibility is what we try to achieve with everything. So yeah, trying to get them into drawers is always handy because you've got yeah. a deep drawer. It means that you can put a number of different appliances in. You just pull out the drawer, pop them in. You know, it's not like before where you have a press below the counter that you're trying to kind of take everything out before you get to the stuff yeah. at the back. Um, so yeah, the deep drawers are definitely more accessible. Mm. Um, even just having wall units, instead of them stopping at normal height, 500 off the counter, a wall mm -hmm. unit that drops into the counter, actually a little bit like the one behind me there. Behind you there, yeah, it's lovely. That kind of cabinet, if you have solid panel doors on it instead of glass, you can have yeah. a few little open things behind that, and then you can have your glasses and your cups and things like that. And they look quite cool as well, you know, so it's a little yes. bit of a touch. So a few no, little definitely. tricks like that can work quite well. Yeah, and like there's this one, Ed, which I think is gorgeous that you did. Um, mm. You know, so yeah, you could, you could have all your appliances low down in that and then you could have, a, you know, other stuff that's accessible. But even just adding that textured glass is so nice. Um, that's one of my favorite cabinets. And I just yeah. love the fact that every, like, there's anything and everything inside there. And it doesn't matter. It looks yeah. really cool. You know, if it was clear glass, it'd look a bit messy. You know, if it was just solid panel doors, it could look a bit dark. So yes. having... Having that ribs bluesy glass in there really adds a bit of character to that end of the room, and mm -hmm. you have all the stuff inside, so it's a super use of space. That was really clever. That, to be fair, the architect on that job there had that idea in mind. That cabinet is recessed into the wall, mm -hmm. so it took a little bit of space out of what would have been a long utility room. So it didn't oh, compromise the utility room space, but it gave mm -hmm. us 
that option to recess that larder press, which was an amazing add-on to that kitchen. Yeah, and look at the amount of storage they get. Like, it's huge, absolutely huge, incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. fabulous, brilliant. And then we got, just looking at that, the, the beautiful, you know, the hinges and the handles and all those little details, and they add so much. And we had a question, just somebody asking, um, jeepers now if I can find it, there's so many. Uh, it was one about, yes, what style of kitchen door would suit aged flooring um, she's keen to go with brass handles she's finishes like a sizal rug there's limestone in her fireplace so what kind mm -hmm. of style of door because you've so many Ed and of course you can make anything so what do you recommend yeah, well, for that sort of look yeah you know it's it's a very interesting question and those are really earthy kind of natural colors and and materials that that person is talking about mm -hmm. so obviously brass is, is becoming is coming back around um, in popularity. So for me, I would be picking an aged brass with those kind of materials. I think it's nice, it's soft, it's not going to stand out too much. Um, you know, you'll find that that person, their own style will kind of draw them towards light fittings and things that would be of a similar sort of um, similar finish. So I think, it, it, mm. think their own style will kind of join together quite nicely with those colors. Yeah, lovely. And do you think in terms of the door style, which is what she's keen, oh. like something like the one in the image might be really nice. You know, it's it's sort of... The shaker door. That? Like yeah, the shaker door. The nice, simple framed door is, is and has been one of the most popular style of doors ever, I guess. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the style of the house, sometimes we'll add a little bit of a detail onto the panel there. So there might be an architectural detail in the shutters if yeah. it's an old house. And we might replicate okay. that. We might go yeah. for something that's a little bit more um, refined, like a little di different bead, like the crystal style metal doors and houses are quite popular. So yes. we will yeah. go into some of the doors so you have a little kind of angled bead detail on it. Um, mm -hmm. We're lucky in that regard that we don't have to pick three or four doors that you have to work with. So we tend to go in to a house and we'll talk to a client and there might be something that will inspire us to say, well, look, I think this style of door will work really well in your scheme. But at mm. the same time, you can really um, you can mix it up a bit. And what we often do is we'd have one, one type of cabinet at one end of the room, but then mm. part of the kitchen elements uh, could be much different. Like it could be a, a wooden flat contemporary style. Um, and they can kind of work together as well. I tend to think it's only right to keep everything matchy matchy. Um, yeah, yeah. So no, I love that idea, and I love that you kind of take a look at what's in the house and then try and create something that's just going to complement everything. Because you're so right. Like again, we got so many questions about open plan and just how to integrate the kitchen. That is critical. That the whole thing feels like it's part of the one space. That you're not sort of got this disjointed um, move from kitchen to living area to dining area. That's it. Well, sure, you know that most spaces these days are being designed as an open plan space. So yes, yeah. it is nice to have that connection there. Even if it's yeah. just a cabinet at the end that kind of flows down instead of a big, big fridge mm. down at one end that maybe you've mm. just got softer cabinets that run down into the dining area. Like that again, like that cabinet behind me, something that has a bit of glazing. So maybe that's where your wine glasses are beside the dining table. So we try mm. to get that really nice... Um, you know, so that things don't just kind of end and then it's the next room. Start again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fantastic. Really lovely. And then just like the, the amazing kitchen behind you there. Um, there was one question just about rules for color. So this person would like to mix dark and light. And they were sort of saying, you know, do you have to go dark in your island and then light on the cabinets? Or so what do you advise people um, with that? Um, well, for, first, we would we would build a scheme um, in the floor up. So I think it's really important to have an idea in mind of what your flooring would like to be. So yeah. if it's going to be a light coloured timber floor or if it's going to be a tiled floor, have a look at those colours. Then start mm -hmm. with your worktops um, and see what colour worktops you'd really like. Yeah. And from there, you build your scheme. So if people want to have a dark kitchen if they like that idea of a darker kitchen i think you mm. need to have lighter floors and lighter worktops so you've got the balance and you've got the contrast in it and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
you know, choosing whether it's the island unit that's dark and the rest is light, I think it, it depends on the way the light hits the room. So like that image earlier on with the larder with the fluted glass, you know, that had a dark larder press, but the main one was, was lighter. So I think every, every space is a little bit different. Um, mm. But I don't think you should be afraid to use dark colours. You know, mm. I think lighter worktops will help keep the light in the room. Um, that would be our tip anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is one we did, and that's exactly it, Ed. Like, it, you know, the very dark, but we kept everything else very bright. Um, yeah. And even introducing the timber and stuff like that just to soften it up. So you can totally mix it up. Or yeah, this one where... Yeah, and then this one we put the dark in the darkest part of the space. So that, that's kind of where the, you know, the old house would have stopped and then everything coming forward into the light was nice and bright. So it really is, yeah. it depends on the room and like you say, where the light is coming in the room and how you're going to spend time in that room as well. You know, how you want to feel when you sit in a certain space. So all of these, these things have a bearing, but you're absolutely right. Like you can mix, mix it up as much as you want, really. Um, which, which is fantastic. I see a question that we got the last time as well, Ed, about freestanding kitchens, which you don't see yeah. that much of anymore. Your views on that? Um... Um, yeah, you don't see as much now. We would still do quite a few, um, I guess, freestanding larders, um, or you might integrate fridge and freezer. So you might have a tall bank of cabinets, and instead of it looking like it's uh, built in, we'd maybe make it look like it's a bit more old school. Now, they tend to be the more traditional type projects. Yeah. Um, and they would typically then be a different style to the main kitchen and island unit. So that, like that, if you've got a main paint, painted kitchen, and mm -hmm. um, shaker style kitchen, you would then do a nice oak larder with fridges either side built in. So it actually looks like an old cupboard rather than a uh, cabin. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. No, really lovely, fabulous. And uh, sorry, I'm really hopping around here because I've seen questions coming in. I'm trying to tie them all together. Loads about flooring, Ed. Mm -hmm. Loads and loads and loads about flooring. And I see one there just about open plan and how to create continuity if you're, you know, planning your flooring. We had loads of people ask us about timber in kitchens. Is laminate a mm -hmm. good idea? Is engineered flooring a good idea? So your view, because I know there's a lot of kitchens of yours that have timber in them. So what are your thoughts there on the timber? I know my thoughts on timber. But I... <laughs> Everybody does things and they're right too. And this yeah. is exactly what I say to everybody. Timber me requires maintenance. So yeah. you, know, you need to know what type of person you are. It, timber will yeah. age. It'll, uh, you know, it will get kind of scuffs and scrapes in high traffic areas. If you're okay yeah. with that, run with timber. Perfect. If you're not okay with that, but you still really, really want timber floors, well then pick the high traffic area. So between the island unit where the wet area is, the sink is, or the cooker is, maybe do a nice tile down there. Maybe it's a tile pattern. Maybe mm, it's a plain yeah. natural stone that runs in with the kitchen. But oh, if you yeah. really, like that one there is really cool. It adds a lot of character and it's in the mm. really high traffic area. So, you know, it's that's going to be fine. You can have your timber elsewhere. That would be mm -hmm. my preferred way of doing it because I, mm -hmm. I just like that look. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and yeah. if, if not, I think if you've got underfloor heating, tiles are, you know, tiles are perfect because, you know, they'll be warm and they're full so they're and um, comfortable. Yeah. And then they're just easy to keep clean. But if you're trying to divide up an open plan space, and I'm sure you know this and you advise your, your clients as well, that you can, if you're lucky enough to have the space where, you know, there might be a structural beam overhead between the kitchen and the dining room, mm -hmm. that's, you can use as a, as a line to split. So you can have tiles yeah. in the kitchen and then you have your timber in the next space. Yeah. But it can break up the feeling of openness, only in your mm -hmm. peripheral vision, but it can break it up a little bit. So it, not all, that doesn't always work in a space, if it's an L-shaped space, it may not flow properly. It might make it a corner look disconnected. Um, so it is an important question, but I suppose the crux of it is timber is going to get, it will get scuffed and scraped over time. So you just mm. have to resolve with yourself whether or not you can deal with that. That's absolutely right. And actually we, we spoke with uh, Jacqueline Walsh from Tile Style a while back about timber flooring. 
Um, mm. And one of the things she recommended, look, if your heart's really set on timber, go for something like a hard wax uh, yeah. finish on it. Would you just give it that little bit more durability? But absolutely, like if you've got pets at home, which so many people have acquired pets in the last 12 months, you know, all these things have a bearing kids. I know my space here gets so much traffic in and out, you know, it's, so personally, for my open plan area, I went for tiles everywhere just to create that continuity. It does really mm -hmm. link it all together um, because you're right. It's lovely to break it up, but it will have, you know, even if it is just uh, like even a small amount of, of timber or something, you will see that that visual break, which, you know, will break up the continuity of the space. And that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Brilliant. And then we got a question, Ed, about um, somebody who is, it's a new build. And they did share, now it's just a building site image with me, but I promised them I would have a look at it. So I don't know if you can see, maybe that one's yeah. a bit better. So what they have is they're creating, it's like an L-shaped space. Yeah. And uh, the space is about, they're saying 4.3 meters wide by seven meters long with the entrance oh, yeah. on the short wall. And yes. they want to allow, like it's a, you know, dining TV space. Um, they're going for a peninsula instead of an island. Do they need to leave greater space between the peninsula and the other units um, as it will be forming a galley of sorts? I don't like peninsula units. I know you no. don't. And actually, we've got lots of questions about peninsulas. I mean, sometimes Ed, they are the only option, though, aren't they? If people are really tight on space and they love that island idea. But go on, um, tell me. <laughs> well, we did talk about it the last time we spoke, but sort of yeah. slightly different context to, to this space. Like I yes, don't yes. think the peninsula, looking for what I do there, I don't think the peninsula would work in that space. That image that you have up there makes sense because you're trying to, you know, you can, you can work off the wall. A peninsula, I guess, if people are trying to do a wraparound kitchen where they're trying to have a wall um, or a, an L shape with the peninsula on it, what it's doing is it's creating a corner, which I think is inefficient. And yeah, I totally agree. That you will have more effective storage by running one long line and then having an island unit. Yeah. And then that way your dining space can come a little bit closer to the kitchen or your armchairs can come a little bit closer to the kitchen. So I would, I would, I would always try and get it a long run with an island unit rather than returning a peninsula, unless in the scenario, like we said, that we spoke about where you're maybe just doing a galley and the, and the peninsula is going to not have a, a corner unit coming off it. <laughs> yes, exactly. If it's not joined up. Yeah, 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 I understand. Mm -hmm. And even like something like, like that's when we did a long time ago now, but it was a very narrow space. So we just put in a very narrow island just to break yeah. up that space. Worked really well. And, and again, the original plan for that had been the person who wanted to do that sort of wraparound with a peninsula mm. at the end. And it just, it really just would not have worked. So yeah, I, I agree. The straight runs are far better. Yeah, like that's a brilliant space. And once you have your sink and your hob on the main run, the island unit's uninterrupted, then your island unit becomes a nice prep space or a sociable space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, yeah, I would opt for that. I'd certainly do my best to try and get that rather than the peninsula, you know. Okay. Um, so I think they could play around with it a little bit more. Yeah, have another look at it. Okay, then that's mm -hmm. fantastic. And actually then another question we got was lots of uh, sizes of different things. So for example, one person asking what's the, like if space is not a problem, what is the best size for um, a butler's pantry or larder press? <clears throat> well, sort of, well, typically speaking, our larder, our two door larders would be between a meter and 1200 wide. Okay. Um, I, I do, we do have, we do have, you know, you go bigger if you want to. Can I just, can I flip around to show you the one here? Oh, please. Yes, please. That'd be amazing. Thank you. No, because this one here is 2.2 meters wide. Yeah. Um, and we have, we have the pocket door, which is great because you can open it up and you can walk away. But that's a great use of space. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. And it's huge, Ed. Like, that's an absolutely amazing space. Mm -hmm. The amount of storage yeah. in that's incredible. 
Exactly. So that takes, you know, that's going to give you, well, it gives you lots of working space. Obviously, we've got a coffee machine, machine built in there. You could have a microwave built in. You could have your KitchenAid sitting up on one corner, toaster in there. So there's endless ways of setting it up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, that's your, that's a big, um, that's a big larder. Um, mm -hmm. Or as if you get the opportunity to have two larder presses that are maybe about a meter wide, that's great because what you can do is you can have one for storage and then you can have one for, um, you can have one for all your food and you can have one for appliances. So you can, you, you, you're clever about what you put in one, like you don't put, well, I don't think you'd put food in, in two larder presses unless you're like a family of 10, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. My fifteen-year-old can can consume some amount of food. Yeah, it really depends. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fabulous. And actually, another one. Um, and just because I'm trying to uh, put as many questions in together so that we cover everybody's questions. But uh, island units, then again. So, are there optimum sizes for island units? And actually, actually, it's something that we get asked all the time. But again, if space isn't an issue, and then if people are tighter on space, so what's the minimum? So minimum and optimum, maybe. Well, the way you have to look at it really is the flow space around the island unit first. So you can't mm -hmm. compromise that just to get in yeah. the island. You're going to need a minimum of a meter between, you know, between the counter and the next counter behind you. Okay. Um, if we can get 1,100 in between counters, that's great, because that way you could have your dishwasher open and maybe a drawer pack on the on the opposite side that you can unload from one to the other or Great, if someone's yeah. standing in the sink and the hob is behind you you need to be able to walk by reach. each other um, so there are a few things that you have to start with the and actually side, Ed, yeah. no sorry that's brilliant that you picked that up because that was another question people were asking and we would always we actually push it we say 1200 so 1100 is actually is what you'd recommend that's that's great yeah, yeah 1200 is fine yeah like a, I yeah. suppose more because if you have 1,200, it's a lovely, it's great, like if you have yeah. it. And most people, I suppose, that we would see are trying to get a tall run on one side and maybe a tall run on the other side and an island in the middle. So you're trying yeah. to, you know, maximize as much as you can. So, um, but yeah, so between 11 and 12 is good. Like the mm -hmm. size of that depends if you're going to have a sink in the island unit because you need yeah. space either side of your sink. And then yeah. if you want seating in the island unit, your island can't be too shallow. If your sink is there, you're splashing people on the seating side. So again, between a meter and 1,200 wide would be a nice size for the island unit. Yes. And yeah. I would say we would do mainly, I suppose, mainly between 2.5 meters and up to three meters long on an island unit. Um, mm -hmm. And in a, in, a, in a good average size kitchen, that tends to be what fits in quite nicely. Yeah, so that's a pretty good speed. Okay, fabulous. And then, Ed, um, again, loads of people asking, uh, better to have your hob or your island free from the hob and the sink? Uh, or, again, what, what would you recommend there? Well, I prefer, personally, to have the island free of, of anything. But mm -hmm. that's not really the option. Um, mm -hmm. So I would find that a lot of people put the sink in the island unit. They just yeah. tend to, they feel they spend a fair bit of time at the sink, so it's kind of nice they can still be engaged in everything else that's going on. But certainly in the last couple of years, the new downdraft type hobs, the likes of Bora and Elica, those downdraft hobs would be very popular. They're all induction mm -hmm. hobs typically, so they're quite safe. And mm -hmm. so you'd find a lot of people putting the hob on the island unit now because they feel that Again, it's, you know, if they're cooking, that it's nice. They have that sense of being able to engage with everybody else. So mm -hmm. if, if you don't have to leave everything off the island unit. It's great if you can. Um, yeah. because it means that the mess is always on the main counter rather than the island unit. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, you know, I'd say, you know, every other kitchen has something on it. So you just figure out what's going to best suit the people. If people have loads of mess around their sink currently, I definitely wouldn't recommend it with the sink on the oh, island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, I think, it, yeah, I would agree with you, particularly now with induction hobs, they're so flat. You know, you can leave things on them quite easily. And particularly now, if people yeah. want to use an island as an extra seating area or 
to eat there. Like sinks is going to have a lot, a lot of water around them. So not great if you're putting books or paper or anything down. So yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. hub, the hub is great. Brilliant. We got a question there. Just I'm going to scroll back a little bit. Um, relocating and remodeling a kitchen to another room be a good idea. Basically, they're looking to maximize light orientation, flow, all of that. It's currently in a converted garage. Now, I would say move the kitchen to where it's going to give you the most enjoyment, ideally connect it with your garden, you know, uh, outdoor space, because I would say that refurbing and spending a lot of money on a kitchen that's in the wrong place would be mm. a waste of money, really. You'd be better off putting the, the cost into getting it right. Absolutely. I, yeah. I'm not an architect, but when I walk into so many houses around the country, and you just can't fathom why the kitchen had been located where it was located. Um, yeah. it's, it's quite remarkable, really. I like that the connection you know, between rooms, like the, the, the utility room or the boot room off the, off the kitchen or the living room space. You say, why have the kitchen in a dark space that's disconnected from everything else? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I do agree. And I think if somebody is, has lived in a house, they should have a fairly good sense of the way the light travels around. You know, it's lovely in the summertime to be able to open the doors and mm -hmm. to be able to fill out, even in the morning time. I can't yeah. wait for the days where the sun is shining I at know. seven o'clock yeah. in the morning and it's warm enough to go outside and have a cup of coffee. And like that, if you're in the kitchen, you know, and somebody's making breakfast and you're just sitting five or 10 feet away outside, like, that's just great. Why would you want it to be in another part of the house? So, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I think that's the first thing. Find the orientation of the sun. See where your kitchen can be, that it's going to get the most amount of sun. Don't forget, you're going to barbecue in the evening time. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you like to be outdoors during the summer, and I love it. Like, I think it's, yeah. you know, you want to be able to go and barbecue out and enjoy the, enjoy your house and your kitchen and garden from the yeah. morning all the yeah. way to the You know, that's yeah. definitely... If that would be the first place I would start if I was designing a house. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think, you know, like obviously I've seen an awful lot of houses in my time, but you know, kitchens historically were utility spaces. So they were, they were they were meant to be out of sight, out of mind. No one was meant to go in there, only the, the poor individual who was having to cook all the food. Mm -hmm. So even in the eighties, you know, uh kitchens were sort of cut off deliberately from the rest of the house and how we live, how we use our homes has changed so dramatically that um, creating a home that, that works for modern day living is, is so important. It really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I go into an awful lot of houses and like that, where people have lived for 20 or 30 years and mm -hmm. for, you know, look, not everybody sees these things the way you and I would see them. You know, like we can walk into a room and kind of start building it in our heads, you know, and imagine how it would be. But you come into a space and you kind of know, you know, saying, if that wall wasn't there, mm -hmm. that would make a huge difference. Your kitchen would be a little bit bigger. The connection between the rooms would be better. So we would quite often go to that extent with people. And I don't, like, you know, if people don't like the idea, that's fine. But I think mm -hmm. you have to take the with people when you go into houses. Go say, look, you know, okay, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but why don't you think about moving this wall or that wall? I am yet to have a person or client come back to you at the end and say, that was a bad idea. Most of them are like, I can't believe it. I'm so happy yes. we did that. You no, know? and it's so important. And that's what I love about your approach, Ed. You know, it is so holistic. It, it, you don't just think about, I'm putting in my kitchen. It's how is this working? How is it integrating? How is it enhancing what's already here? And that is what's so important. No project should be done in isolation. It's impossible. Um, mm -hmm. You can't just refurb your kitchen without thinking of all the spaces it's going to impact and stuff. So no, it's critical. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, really no, I love, I love Like that's one of the things that I really enjoy is going into houses like that and, you know, kind of suggesting those things and like that, getting people to think outside the box. Like for yeah. us, that's, that's an essential part of the process. I'm not interested in just selling boxes. Like, Every job is different, you know, it's it's more exciting for us to go in there and, you know, really design the space for the people exactly mm -hmm. for them. Nothing, I'm not going to live there. So, you know, mm -hmm. if they want a traditional style kitchen, that's what I'll get them, Amazing. you know, and yeah, make it yeah, work. Cool. And if they want a super contemporary kitchen, 
that's great too. You know, we'll do that too. Yeah, so, yeah I think it's um, I think it's an important part of the job. Design no, process. it is, and and you know what as well. Like for everybody, it's so hard to see past how you're using your house currently. So mm-hmm. to have the fresh pair of eyes for you to walk in and say, Do you know what, if that wall was gone, like people mm-hmm. may never even have considered it. So no, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really good. It's very true. I think people are so fixated, even though they may have thought about how, how will they relay the kitchen, because the kitchen sink was always at the window. They can't yeah. think. Well, if I move that, so that's it. We come in and we go blank canvas. Okay, we're going to put that over on the other wall, and they go. Oh, can't believe it. Never thought of that. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's incredible. It's great, and that that is one of the joys. You know, it is. It's just opening up these new possibilities and really changing yeah. how things are. It's great. Yeah, really fabulous. Well, look, I'm so conscious of time, but I'm just going to end on this one last thing, and I promise everybody who asked questions, we didn't. I'll go through them. And I'll try and cover them all, so don't worry. And I'm sure Ed as well, if you want to mop up any that we... Send them to us on Instagram as well. And I'll do my best. Exactly. To we're here. We're here and we'll, we'll do our best to answer everything. But just the last one, I think it's a very good one. Um, just storage in an island unit. And what do you recommend there? What kind of storage? Just people planning island units. Well, I think... So, again, drawers are going to be the best. Mm-hmm. So if you're within the island unit, well and good. Generally, mm-hmm. your bin will be beside it and your dishwasher will be beside your sink. So you kind of group those together. The sink is on the main. I try and keep the bin on the island unit. So, you know, I think yeah, I'd agree sink. definitely. Yeah, you can do the prep work. So you just scrape into the dish or into the bin below you. Something else that's quite cool and um, it's just a. Uh, space for phones and things like that so we quite often use charging drawers mm-hmm. in the kitchen so you have a drawer with some sockets inside um, brilliant yeah you can put stuff away and just kind of keeps things off the counter uh, there's always a pile of bills on a, on an island unit it seems paper on the island <laughs> I know well, we dealt with that we had our yeah. con Mary consultants talking about that Ed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah you, still, you still need to have a, a junk drawer in a kitchen Every kitchen, yeah, no matter what. Yes. Yeah, it <laughs> does. We don't have to do it much, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah. No, an organized one, though. Very important. Organize the junk drawer. Yeah. Fantastic. yeah. No, that's great. No, brilliant. And then just to say as well, because um, with island units, they're not just one-sided often. Often you can have storage on both sides and, and incorporate areas to sit in and stuff like that. So, you know... Yeah. I'm sure you've put all sorts of things from wine racks to book stands to... Right, you do. The seating is a big thing because I suppose, again, depending on the size of the room space, hmm. it wouldn't be uncommon these days for people not to have a kitchen table. Um, hmm. So you want to have a comfortable seating space at the island unit. So I think you have to be clever about that as well. That it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a bar the whole time. So yeah. we've done quite a few yeah. different versions of that that worked out really well. Um, yeah, a lot of people like the wine cabinet. Actually, one of the questions that was there, and it was like, what new things? In the last 12 months, you would not believe how many cocktail cabinets have gone into Yes, the well, no, sure. Look, we talked to, I had Niall Mullen, who is, you know, yeah, fabulous really antiques. Oh, he's so amazing. But he was saying, like, you cannot get cocktail uh, cabinets for really? love or money now. Really? You know, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. But what a brilliant really? idea. The amount yeah. of cocktail Zoom parties that we've had it's with family and friends yeah. this year. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it's brilliant. It's another sociable thing to do in your kitchen. And cocktails is like preparing yeah. food. You know, it's it's the whole yeah. experience of making a mess. You're chatting with friends and family. And uh, yeah, like I, it's so funny. Like uh, we've done quite a few drinks cabinets in, in the kitchens now. So I, I think that's, I think it's great. It's a bit of, you know, it's a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of a laugh and it's something to do. Look, you can always be changed out, you know, change function in a few years' time. If we, That's it, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I want one, Ed, yeah. I, I, I'll have one, definitely. Yeah. No, it's a brilliant idea, <laughs> brilliant idea. Well, Ed, thank you so much. Um, again, yeah. I'll share some of these fabulous images of your stuff. They're just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you so much for your amazing advice, as always. It's just been absolutely brilliant. And everybody, I hope we answered as many as we could. But as I say, I'll go through them. Any I've missed, I'll try and answer and Ed as well. And do, do engage with us. Uh, ask us any questions you might have. But um, Ed, thank you so much. 
Thanks, Denise. Really appreciate it. All right. It. Thank you. Bye. No, pleasure. Pleasure. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.